you know, milking the cow. Let's see what, Brent, stop touching that, that's hot. Don't do that. Ah, yes. These turned out much better. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing and today we got a good one. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be mixing up some stuff in the shop. And what I've realized is, uh, well, it's winter. I've realized that finally because in the south, you know, in Alabama, it doesn't get cold very quickly. But it's finally cold enough that it's keeping me off the water a little bit. So we're gonna do some work in the shop. Um, you know, videos like making baits, cleaning reels, uh, just getting ready for the next season. Um, just because, well, truthfully, I'm on the water all the time. but. You know, sometimes in the winter time, you just take a little bit of a break, and I get that. So we're gonna do some off the water content, and today we're gonna be actually mixing up some Senkos and some Creature Baits. I'm actually gonna flip you all around real quick, and I'm, I'm gonna show you what we're doing. So we've got Plastisol, we've got some worm oil, we've got our stirs and mixers, and here is what we're uh, what we're looking at. I'm looking at these five inch Senkos, and I'm looking at these Creature molds right down here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up a black and a blue, and we're gonna do a swirl pattern in those stick baits and the creature baits. And what you need for that are the things I've mentioned. I'm also gonna put a little bit of you know blue flake in the uh, black and a little bit of black flake in the blue just to give it a nice rounded color. We need our dual injection with the, uh, the little combiner here. I don't really know what you call that, but it combines the two injectors to make them a dual injector. We need our mixing block, which is this little thing. It's a C block. Mix all that up, and then we've got our containers that are actually gonna hold the plastisol. Don't forget, if you're not in a well-ventilated area, have a ventilator mask on. Uh, this stuff can be pretty dangerous once it gets to temperature. And then we have a little bit of uh, liquid fuel there for myself. So we're gonna use the microwave. We're gonna get all this mixed up. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. So this is a little creepy because I gotta be down low, but I want y'all to see everything that we're doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by taking our two Pyrex cups here. We're gonna add, I don't know about, let's do a little half a cup each actually. So let's go ahead and throw some of this in there, about half a cup right there. It's actually closer to three fourths, about right there. Looks pretty good to me. Let's get to uh, microwaving this sucker up. We've got the two cups right here. Uh, and once we get to about, I don't know, 275, the stuff's gonna start going clear. And uh, about 350, we should be going good to go on mixing in our, uh, our colors. That's where the key's gonna be today, is mixing in the colors. All right, so I'm starting off with uh, three minutes in the microwave for both of those cups being in there. We're just gonna see where we're at. We're gonna get a little status update once we get it out. The hardest part about this is mixing the colors. Um, you don't wanna go too dark on the blue because the black will actually overpower it and you'll end up with something that doesn't even look like it's got any blue in it at all. You have actually need to go lighter than you would want on whatever color is going to be the lightest, which would be the blue. Um, the, the black in there is gonna really bring the tone down. I'll show you what I mean. We're probably gonna mix in a little bit of white with the blue, make it a nice, a little bit more of a pale blue. Um, and the black's gonna darken that up once we mix it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just hang in there, we're gonna get there. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty fun. I like a, who doesn't like a nice swirl in their stick baits? Well, the glass feels warm, but we're not even close. Yeah, it's still super liquidy. I got one at 230 and one at 270, so. Still got a little ways to go, or two, 2.30 and one at 2.07. Jeez, I got dyslexic there. All right, let's go again. All right, so the C block, this guy right here, the mixing block, I need to get out my little heater that's in here, which I really don't need it. It's actually pretty warm in the garage already. But I need to get out my heater and warm this thing up, uh, especially the internals, the, the mixing part itself right there. I need to get that all straightened out, um, warmed up, so that when I insert the, uh, or inject the plastisol, the hot plastisol, it doesn't get cold very quickly. Um, because once it gets cold and hardens in here, I'm kinda done, I can only shoot one bait. The hotter I get this thing, the more of these I can shoot. 
with uh, one injection full, if that makes sense. So, got to heat this thing up. That's objective number one right now. Uh, I'm going to aim y'all down. I'm actually going to show you what I did. Uh, love it or hate it, this is what we're doing. We've got our little Mr. Buddy heater, and I've got the uh, mixing block on top of that. Uh, basically, what that means, definitely going to need those guys here in a minute. So, hang tight. Let's uh, check the plastisol. All right, we're starting to go clear. It's nowhere near as white. I had to guess. We're right, I would say right around 300. Uh, it's starting to get nice and warm. We do have some little micro bubbles in there. Not a huge deal. Uh, we can work those out as we get hotter. And now is about the time where I need to put on the mask because it's, it's about to get a little fumy in here. Yeah, this thing is not quite ready yet. If you don't get it all the way to 350, uh, you run the risk of it never really curing, or it has this weird cure to it. Just doesn't look right. All right, mask is on. Yep, that's right. 261. Not exactly ideal. See the fumes? Not so good. Do a little bit more mix in here. Yeah, we're starting to look better on the consistency. I hope y'all can hear me. I mean, I don't know how I sound with... I'm sure it's pretty muffled. Just a smidge more, we're at 330. Like, I can't say enough how important it is to get to exactly 350. Um, really anywhere between 350 and about, I'd say, 380, 390. You're completely fine without burning it, um, but you've got to reach that point. Otherwise, you're going to get this jelly. It's just never going to cure. It's going to almost feel sticky and jelly-like, especially with the uh, dead-on plastics. But you hit 350, you are golden. Let's uh, bring y'all over here and show you what I got. So we are very clear. We do have some bubbles, especially in that one. You can really see, definitely have some bubbles going on there. Not so much here, a little bit, but not as much as that guy. Now I gotta tell you, I'm really not too worried about the bubbles. Main reason, um, you gotta think about how air works. The hotter it gets, the more it expands. So that's about 350 degrees. Sure, it's going to expand, but as it cools, those bubbles will actually contract. So micro, micro bubbles, the little bitty, bitty ones, are not really too much of a big issue. They're not really, you're not going to be able to see them in your bait that much. Sure, you want to get as many of them out as you can, but they've never really been that big of a problem. Um, the bigger ones that you see around the edge, those guys right there, I work those on purpose to the edge so they won't be in my injection. So now let's uh, get y'all down here, let's flip this around and get to mixing these colors up. So I'm going to be muffled again, so sorry. All right, we're going to start with uh, black right here. So shake up your colorant, and we're going to put a good bit in there. And a lot of people actually have a, like, recipes for their colors. I am not one of those people. I eyeball it. Well, that's definitely black. It's really more of a charcoal. We actually need a little bit. You want to go heavy on your darks, lighter on your lights. A really nice deep black. Yep. A really good black right there. All right, we're going to take some of the blue glitter. And I'm going to be very generous with the blue because the black is so black. I mean, a lot of blue glitter. But it'll start to thin out here in a minute. That looks pretty good. I mean, it by itself is a really good black and blue color. But we're actually going to have the blue swirl with a little bit of black in it. So. 
Let's get to working on that now. Shake up our blue. We're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many. It doesn't matter. We can save it no matter what. I want a deep color, but light. And what I mean by that is non-transparent as far as like the hue of it. Like that's a good, almost like blue raspberry type color blue. Almost like a candy blue. The thing is, is it's transparent. So when you mix it with the black, it's gonna make it look super dark. So the key here is to lighten it up just a little bit with a little bit of white. That white is gonna make it a little less transparent. A little bit more. Even a little bit more. There we go. Now that, while it looks like a super light blue, when we mix it with that black, it's gonna darken up. You're actually gonna get some defined swirls, and that's what we're after, is some really defined looking swirls. So I know you're thinking, but I want that deep blue. I promise, this will turn a darker color when they mix together, or swirl together. Let's hit it with some uh, black glitter. think of that. That looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's hit them in the microwave for a little bit longer just to uh, let them all cool back off or warm back up and uh, then we will start injecting. And that's where the fun begins. I'd say they're warm. I don't know if y'all can see the steam coming off of them. I would say they're warm. I don't think we're going to have a problem there. Perfect. All right. Let's give them a quick little stir. All right, so we're ready to go. Now the key to this is when I pull up as far as I, or suck up as far as I can and give it a pop on each side. Just pop, 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 pop. That's gonna give me a swirl. All right, let's do it. And now we wait. The good news is, is that thing got so hot it is actually burning me through the gloves and I know it did its job because I have a puddle where all of it leaked out right there. And if those are my two colors and they mix together just like that, oh man, that's gonna be a really, really nice black and blue color. Now also, always cap your sprue. You see how it's sort of sucking in there as it cools off? That's how you get air bubbles in your stuff. So always, you saw me take the black and sort of put it in Again, to cap everything off, that's why you do that, because that's gonna suck in more air as it cools off. Now let's crack these open, shall we, and see what we got. All right, let's, let's crack this thing open and see what we got. I'm gonna take the first peek. Uh, it's like I'm keeping a little secret. Oh man, that looks good. Check that out, guys. Check those out. You've got a nice black and blue swirl. And you see, like I said, Look how light this color was compared to the blue that it actually turned into. Can y'all see that? It's a very, very light blue, but in the worms, it darkens it up a good bit because of the black. 
So don't be scared to go lighter than you need on your lighter colors. Like the blue would be the light color in this scenario. Black is obviously always darker. Uh, so yeah, it turned out extremely well. I'm extremely happy with that. Can't wait to crack the other ones open. And of course you've got your, I don't know if y'all can see that. See if I can get it to focus. You've got your blue flake in the black and black flake in the blue. That right there is a awesome, awesome looking colored bait. I like that a lot. As suspected, those turned out really good as well. A nice swirl pattern mix of the uh, black and blues. Can't go wrong with that. I really, really like that. And for the piece de la resistance, let's crack open the uh, creatures. Good seal on this thing. Check those things out. You never know what you're gonna get. So just the way it shot, I got more of a blue on this guy with like a black tail. Then I've got like a blue tail on these and a, a little bit of blue there. And this one mainly went black. It's all good though. I got some blue in there. I mean, the idea is the same. We're gonna shoot these again, see if we can get a better outcome. But you can sort of see the, uh, the difference there. I really like that bait actually. It's not too bad. It's like I got a blue one with black claws and a black one with blue claws. I could deal with that. That's a pretty good looking bait. All right, let's hang this up. Let's shoot another one of those and uh, we'll call this video done. All right, that's set back up. We're gonna put our gloves on to handle this thing. This thing got hot, 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 hot. We're gonna turn this thing. Whoo, it's still hot. Don't touch that, Brett. What are you doing? That was a dumb idea. That thing is very hot. Let's just go on and put on our uh, our gloves, shall we? This is gonna be the last ones we do. I think these are gonna turn out well. I got I got better ideas for this. Uh, I think it's gonna shoot better this time. All right, blue is ready to go. Let's see what Brent, stop touching that. That's hot. Don't do that. Put on your gloves for goodness sakes. That is hot. No killing yourself. I think what I want to do is angle it. Yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna... I don't know. We're gonna angle it because I don't want it to be flat-sided on either side. I want it to be, you know, we're gonna angle it sideways. If I do this, I could actually make a laminate where it's on each side, front and back, but we're gonna cock it sideways so I can maybe get a better swirl pattern going there. Just a, an idea of thinking of on the fly there. All right, let's uh, suck this up real quick and let's go. All right, I felt like I got a pretty good mix on that one. And the term for this where you're actually doing this, you can do it both hand, like with both hands hitting. That's called milking the cow. Think of it like, you know, milking the cow, but you're actually hitting each injector as you go down. Milking the cow is the actual term for that if you just, you know, fun fact of the day. We're gonna give this a second to set up and uh, then we're gonna crack it open. See what we got and I think we're gonna call that a done deal. If uh, you haven't noticed, hopefully the video quality is a little bit better. Um, we're actually using the brand new big camera. Yes, me and Chris have a big camera now to use on the boat and in all of our fishing videos. It's actually my family camera and we bought it for the new baby, but I'm gonna hijack it every now and then. And use it for stuff like this uh, because I think the video quality is just much better. I mean, you can see I'm clearly in focus right now. The background's blurry. I mean, that's, we're moving up in the world. All right, let's crack this guy open. Get the oil on my hands off. There we go. Ah, yes. These turned out much better. Look at that. We actually got a really good mix on there this time. So your blues and blacks, those turned out a lot better. 
that's actually a more of a swirl like I was expecting. So I can dig that. You can actually see the mix going down the, uh, the tube there. A little bit more black and blue on that side too. So I'm much happier with these. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I, I, those just turned out a lot better than these guys, which didn't, didn't really mix as well. It was sort of a, you know, it did its own thing, but these mixed really, really well. I got a lot more of a swirl going than I did here. So I'm happy with that. Those turned out much better. And that, my friends, is gonna do it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're gonna do a swirl yourself, remember, go really light on that, on that opposite color, that lighter color, go really, really light to a very, very dark. Um, you really need that yin and the yang there to make that work. That's the only way you get the visible colors, uh, the visible color difference in your black and blues. Um, especially in your stick baits, just because they're such close quartered on those black and blues. Uh, these guys actually turned out really well. There's a clear, clear contrast there. But if you go too dark on your blues, it just all ends up looking black. I mean, you can see how light that blue is. Got to go really, really, really light. Look, it's almost, it's almost matching. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Again, we're going to be doing. Do, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We're going to be doing more off the water stuff. Um, as winter goes on, you know, we're going to actually be doing our own John boat repair. Yes, we have a John boat that we're going to be fixing up. Uh, we're probably going to try to put in a dock at the pond, um, as well as some, you know, your normal pond maintenance, uh, some more sit down videos, some bait making videos. And of course we'll, we'll throw in a couple on the water videos. The big thing is, is most of you are hunters and because y'all are hunters, y'all have sort of zoned out from the bass fishing for a while, and I get that. Here's what I'm gonna do. If you will watch the next live stream we have on Wednesday night, one of these guys is going to be included in that. Um, leave in the comments below which bait you would like to see given away in one of those live streams. Of course, we're gonna have more stuff to give away in the live stream, but this is gonna be part of the giveaway. But I'm gonna leave which one gets given away to you guys. You like that? You like the autofocus difference? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, as always, hit the like button. Like button always helps these videos get going. And uh, if you don't mind, leave the comment below on which bait you wanna see given away in the next live stream, whichever, whenever I release this video, it could be a week before the live stream. You'll have to check it out Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. is when we do the live streams. We're doing giveaways all through December. And, uh, you know what to do. If you see the red subscribe button, it means you're not subscribed yet. Go on, hit it, turn it gray. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the ding dong notifications if you want to be notified of any future content that we have. All it does is send you an email. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.